What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you 4 really pro tips that you probably didn't know. Let's get started. Number 1. Pattern Glass Here I have a window with a typical glass material applied to it. Let's test render it. That looks good. Next, I will download a pattern for the glass. I will use this wavy pattern here, but you can use anything you like. Now I'll go back to the glass material, go down to Refraction, then I'll click here to add a map to the Refraction Glossiness. You can see that the pattern is not rendering correctly, so let's go back and go down to Binding and change the texture mode to Custom. Now you can see the pattern on the rendering screen, but it doesn't show up in the SketchUp viewport. So let's go up here and copy the map that we imported earlier. Then we can paste it here in this slot. Now we can see it in the SketchUp viewport. And we can also change the size of the texture here. That looks pretty good. If the effect is too strong, then you can go to the map and go down to Color Manipulation and use the Color Offset slider to change the intensity. Alternatively, you can invert the texture like so. Pretty cool, huh? Now I'll go back and turn off the Refraction Glossiness map for now. Then I'll copy the texture and paste it in the Refraction Color slot. With some more adjustments, you can make it look like the pattern is colored glass instead of frosted glass. Let's zoom in closer to see it in detail. Here you can see that the black part is also reflective to make it pop a bit more. We can copy the same map that we've been using and paste it here in the reflection color slot. And you can also change the color here. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, this is great for decorative glass such as this shower door here. Number 2. Water on glass First, I'll go to Polygon and download a water droplet material. You can go to the Surface Imperfections category and then select Water Droplets. Here they have lots of different materials, but you can download this one for free. After you download it, right-click and extract it to get access to all of the included maps. Now go back to SketchUp, and similar to the previous tip, I have the same starting model. Now in the Glass material, I will go down to the Bump section, then click here and load in a bitmap file. I will select the normal map in the package. There are two versions, but I will choose the 16-bit one for higher quality. Then to make it render correctly, I need to change the color space to rendering space. And since this is a normal map, we need to change the map mode from bump map to normal map. It's quite hard to see the texture, so let's zoom in a bit. You can see that it's still really small. Similar to the previous tip, you can see that we cannot change the size of the texture. To fix it, you can copy the normal map, now go down to Binding and change the texture mode to Custom. Then we can paste the map here as an instance. Now we can see the map on the SketchUp viewport. You can also change the opacity in the SketchUp material tray to make it easier to see the texture. Now we can change the size of the map here. Also, if this effect is too much, then you can change the intensity here. And if you have a different map, like this rain streak texture, then you can load it in and re-render. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, this type of material is great for rainy scenes with some rain streaks on a glass window. Number 3. V-Ray Wrapper For the scene, I'll use an HDR image. So let's turn off the sunlight and add a dome light to the scene. Now I'll import an HDRI, then let's test render it. For this tip to work, we need to change from CPU render to QDA render. It's a bit too dark, so let's adjust the intensity to make it brighter. Also, change the shape to sphere so we can see the full HDRI. Now we can move around to see our environment. That looks good. Now let's place a car here. I would use the new KS Cosmos to add a car. Now we can move the camera or move the car to a good position where it fits the environment better. Instead of moving the camera, you can change the orientation of the HGRI by rotating the dome light. However, before you do that, you need to enable Use Transform. 
Now every time you rotate the dome light, the HDRI will rotate accordingly. Alternatively, you can always move and rotate the object however you want to make it fit the scene better. That's starting to look good. But as you can see, this is the problem when placing an object on top of an HDRI. The car seems to be floating because it has no shadows. But there's a way to fix it. Before we continue, let's save the camera view so we don't lose it later. Now I will use this button to lock the render camera view so we can move around without disrupting the view. Next, we will need to create a ground plane for the shadows to cast on. Also, let's reverse this face. Now let's go to the asset editor and create a wrapper material and apply this to the ground plane we just created. Next, we will need to change the alpha contribution to black alpha. Then turn on matte and enable shadows. We can see the shadows now, but we need to remove the ground plane. To do that, we need to change the settings. First, go to the HDRI and copy the map, then paste it in the background texture as an instance. You can see that the ground plane is removed, but this part looks super dark. So let's go back to the HDRI and change the intensity to 1. It looks dark, but we can change the brightness by adjusting the exposure value. As you can see, the V-Ray wrapper material will help create shadows on top of the HDRI and make your render look more realistic. Instead of using an HDRI, you can also use a flat image. To do that, you can go to Settings, Environment, and remove the current background image. Then I can insert a new bitmap image. You can see that it looks a bit odd, so we need to make some changes to the HDRI. If we turn it off completely, then we will lose the lighting. So I'll turn it back on and go to its settings and make the HDRI background invisible. Next, we need to go back to the new background image and go to texture placement to change the mapping to screen. There we go, that looks better. Now we can move the car to a position where it fits the scene better. As you can see, this method also worked, but remember that you need to replicate the lighting condition as similar to the background image as possible. Thankfully, the previous HDRI that we used was good enough for the scene. The Varia Wrapper material is also great for creating mock-up materials like this. Number 4. Light Trails First, let's draw a rectangle. I'll draw it vertically with a height of about 6 inches and make it quite long. This will represent the light trail. Now let's go to the Varia Asset Editor and create an emissive material. Next, click on the texture slot for the color and create a gradient texture. Here we can customize the gradient. Since we want the outside to have a color and the inside to have a different color, we need to add a color to the middle of the gradient by left clicking. Now I can change the color of each point like so. I'll add a red color to the outer colors and the inner color will be a lighter red or orange. Next, let's use the paint bucket tool and apply the material to the rectangle. Then let's test render. You can see that the texture is going the wrong direction, so we can change it here. There are other type of UV mapping for the gradient that you can try. I'll keep it simple for this one. That looks better, but we still need to resize the material to fit the rectangle, which was about 6 inches tall. Now let's change the sunlight settings so that it's nighttime where we can see the emissive material easier. That's looking better. And remember that you can always edit the material more if you like. For example, you can change the interpolation here to have different looks for the gradient. You can also add more colors to the gradient by left clicking, and if you right click, then you can remove it. I can use this method to make the red color more prominent. When you're happy with how it looks, let's go to the V-Ray frame buffer and open the left flyout panel, then go to the lens effects, and here we can turn on the bloom and glare. It doesn't seem like it's working even at the max size and intensity. So let's go back and increase the intensity of our emissive material. Then we can re-render and try again. That looks awesome. Now we can make it longer like so, and it looks even more like a light trail. Let's apply this method to our scene. If your scene has some curves like this row here, then you can first draw the path with the arc tool. And since a light trail is made by the car tail lights or headlights, there needs to be two of them in each lane. So I will use the offset tool to do that. Now we can select all of these lines, and extrude them by vector using the extrude tool. Then you can apply the material to all of them and do a test render. 
That looks great. You can also add more light trails so that they don't look too uniform. Or you can even change the color of the light trails to be more red if you like. Pretty cool, huh? And here's a great example from Chaos Group of how you can use the light trails to improve your night scenes. And those are some pro tips in V-Ray and SketchUp that you probably didn't know. If you're looking for similar tutorials but for beginners, I would suggest you take a look at this class on Skillshare, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in creative skills like design, illustration, and many more. The premium membership will get you unlimited access so you can join any classes and communities that you like. The great thing is that Skillshare is really affordable with an annual subscription that's less than $10 a month. But as part of this sponsorship, Skillshare has set up a free trial for the first 1,000 people who join. So you can take all of their classes completely for free. If that's something you're interested in, then go to this link here. I will also leave a link to a few useful classes that I took. One of them is Learn SketchUp and V-Ray Beginner to Advanced. This is a comprehensive class with four parts that walks you step by step on how to build a house in SketchUp and then render with V-Ray. If you're looking for a similar tutorial for 3ds Max, then there's a class called Create Photorealistic Interior Renders with 3ds Max and V-Ray. There are also many more classes and communities that you can join. Again, the first 1,000 people who use this link can join Skillshare today for free. Anyway, that's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment below and let me know if you have any questions. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.